Hey guys, this is Harshita and I'm the host for the day. So before we start, there's a quick check. Just let me know in the chat section, am I audible to you all or not? Then we can start the session. Just text, uh, just text us, please. Yeah, great. And I'm getting so many yes. So hi guys, this is Harshita, your host for the day, and I'm a community specialist at Design Hill, and I hope you guys are doing great and staying safe. So welcome to this wor workshop session where we are going to discuss, learn how to track the ROI of your social media marketing. Today's event is brought to you by Design Hill, world's leading creative marketplace that caters to the creative needs of businesses and individuals alike who can source high quality pro designs from professional designers and buy unique products created by independent artists. So moving ahead, we have Leslie Samuel with us, who I'm so much thankful to Leslie who has taken out the time from his busy schedule and help us here to to help us all your attendees, all our attendees with his awesome tips and tricks. So let me introduce Leslie. So Leslie Samuel is a creator of ISM and the host of Leslie Samuel show, who, where he teaches how to build an online business by creating content. As a former university professor, he has a passion for education. He founded and later sold Interactive Biology, a blog dedicated to many biology, uh, biology fun for students and teachers worldwide. And as a head of training for social media marketing strategy, he helps to ensure that social media marketers get the training they need to stay leading edge of social media. His message is simple, create content, inspire others and change the world while building a solid online business. Wow. So let's see how it all started. Sorry, Leslie, you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Well, I'm Yes, yes. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me and excited to share some tips on how to track the ROI of social media with you guys. Great, great. So just a small question before we start all this. So how it all started with you? How did you know, how, how did you come to know that we, you have this talent and you are going to this uh, track now? Yeah, so I, I um, I was a high school science and math teacher and I was um, you know, teaching and I remember stumbling on to this whole thing of internet marketing and uh, started learning about it and started realizing that, hey, this is something that excites me and this is something that I could use to have an impact on the world. And it's just kind of grown from then and uh, evolved from there. So I am excited to be here today to talk to you about how to track the ROI of social media. I see we have people here uh, from all over the world. We've got Ridwan in Indonesia. We have Malik in Pakistan. We have Farah in uh, Haiti. And I saw Trinidad and Tobago. So we have some Caribbeans here as well. I am originally from St. Martin and I'm excited to be talking with you all today about this topic, how to track the ROI of social media, of your social media marketing, just really quick. If you can see this on the screen right now and you can read everything, it's clear, just let me know. Just say yes or clear or something along those lines uh, so that I can know that we are all good to go. All right, so I see good, I see awesome, I see yes, clear, all that good stuff, sweet. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. How do you track the ROI of your social media marketing. And I wanna tell you a little bit about myself really quick before we get started. Uh, my name is Leslie Samuel. I am, like I said, originally from St. Martin, but I live in the United States in Florida. Uh, and when I really started getting into what I was doing online, um, one of the things that I started was a biology blog. 
Yes, I am a biology nerd. I studied biology and I, I did a master's in neurobiology and I wanted to become a university professor, but I didn't want to do the PhD thing. Uh, so I started a blog. And on that blog, I would post biology videos and I would talk about, you know, the systems in the body and all of that stuff. And I use YouTube and social media uh, to grow that. Now, what I do is I focus on helping people who want to do that, who want to take something they're passionate about, create content, put it online, put it on the internet so that they can have an impact, but also so that they can build their business. Now, we're gonna go into a lot of details today. And here's what I want, because we're gonna go into some technical stuff, we're gonna go into uh, you know tracking and all of that stuff and analytics, but what I want for you to do is to take away one thing. If you literally just walk away from today's session and you can take action on just one thing, I will see this as a success, all right? So pay attention to everything, get all the details, but at least take action on one thing and we're gonna be good to go. So the question that we are trying to answer today is this. Can you track the ROI of social media? Is this something, you know, a lot of people, they do their social media marketing and they think, man, I hope, I hope it's working. Um, I'm, I'm not sure because I can't see how much, you know, I'm making from these social media efforts or anything of that sort. And what I want to show you is that it is possible. All right. So let's look at what this looks like if we do it right. So we're gonna jump into Google Analytics. And I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna give you a preview of what we're gonna be looking at today, all right? So this is Google Analytics, a Google Analytics account for one of my clients. And you know, there's a lot of details on the screen. Don't try to, I don't want you to try to know everything that's on the screen or pay attention to everything on the screen. I'm gonna point out a few things uh, for you today. Here's what I want you to see, all right? So we're looking at in Google Analytics, and right here, we're seeing a number of things that we did on social media, on YouTube, and so on. And you can see them numbered from one to 10. There was a video here, uh, this must end, another video, an email, a blog post, and, the, and another video, and these videos were posted on social media. All of these are different things that we did as a part of a specific promotion, all right? A specific promotion that we did. And here's what I want you to see. From that promotion, if you look over here, you can see exactly how many transactions came from each and every one of these things, whether we did it on social media or via email or a blog post or a community page, we're now able to track exactly what happened as a result of each of these posts. So the idea here is what I want to show you today is how you can go from just saying, yeah, I'm getting traffic from Facebook or I'm getting traffic from Instagram or Pinterest. I want you to be able to say, when I made that specific post on, social, on Facebook on that day about this particular topic, this is what happens as a result. If that sounds exciting to you, if that sounds like something you want to learn, say yes or let's do it or something like that in the chat so that I could know that, you know, I'm teaching this to the right people. Uh, Iola says, oh, yeah. Cole says, power, dude. <laughs> We've got people that are excited uh, to learn about all kinds of stuff. And Iola, yes, you are hearing a Caribbean accent. I am originally from St. Martin. So that is exactly what you're hearing there. It's a little St. Martin Island flavor for you today. Okay, so it seems like this is what you wanna learn. So if this is what you wanna learn, let's go ahead and do it. Now I wanna tell you what the requirements are. What are you gonna have to have in order for this to work? Three requirements. You're gonna have to have a website, all right? If, if, if we're, we're talking about an online business here, 
and with your online business, you have to have a website. Number two, you're going to need to have something to sell or something to promote. Now, if you don't have anything to sell, you'll still be able to use what we're doing today or what I'm showing you today, but you won't be able to say, for example, that that post brought in $52.61. Uh, you won't be able to get that specific but you'll be able to still see how much traffic came from each of the individual posts that you did on social media. And number three, you're gonna need to have Google Analytics installed, all right? So as long as you have these three things, you are gonna be able to do what we are talking about today. All right, so we're not talking about some fancy, expensive process where you need to make a huge investment. Just about everything I'm gonna show you how to use today is gonna be free. If you like free, then you kinda like me. I like free, free is good. <laughs> All right, let's continue now by talking about what are the steps involved in this process. We have five steps that I'm gonna walk you through today. Step number one, identify and break down your goals. Number two, you wanna set it up, set it up in, set up your goals in Google Analytics. Number three, we're gonna create our campaign URLs. Number four, we're gonna share our links on social media. And number five, we're gonna analyze our results. This is the premise of everything that we're going to go through today, and I'm going to walk you through those steps right now. Okay, number one, identify and break down your goals more specifically. How do we do that? Well, there are some questions that I want you to answer. Question number one, what is the ultimate goal of your business? What is the ultimate goal of your business? Now, if I think about this for myself, you know, I'm someone that helps creators build businesses around what they want to create. People that have a passion to create something, they want to put it out there. My ultimate goal is to help creators, people like you, build successful businesses around what they want to create. That is my ultimate goal. Now, your ultimate goal might be somewhat different, but the idea is you want to answer that question, what is your ultimate goal? Maybe you're a realtor and maybe you help working families find their perfect home. Uh, maybe you have a platform online where you help uh, pregnant moms look awesome with your unique fashion brand, a maternity fashion brand. The main thing is this, what are you, what is your ultimate goal? What is the goal of your business? What do you help people with? How do you serve people? The second question uh, that you're gonna wanna answer is the following. What metrics can you measure that gives you an idea that you are accomplishing that goal? Maybe, you know, uh, if you're like me, you, you do one-on-one -on -one coaching and you're trying to, to, to track how many people are signing up for coaching calls and coaching experiences. Or maybe you have an ebook for sale. Maybe you have a service that you provide. Maybe whatever that is, you want to have a metric that you're going to be paying attention to to give you an indication that you're meeting that goal. All right. And number three, where will you connect on, with people, with your audience? Are you gonna be using Facebook? Are you gonna be using Instagram? Are you gonna be using Pinterest? Uh, are you gonna be using email? Where, what platforms are you gonna be using to connect with your audience or to connect with your potential audience? All right, next, number, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna organize those platforms, the places that you're gonna be connecting with people in two different levels. And the two levels are this. You're gonna have a campaign name and campaign sources. Campaign names and sources. Now, I, I, I don't, we're not gonna get too technical about all of the details of this. We're gonna get, actually we're gonna get quite technical, but for right now, what I want you to understand is that these are just two different categories, two different levels of organization. So for example, since we're talking about social media, you can have a campaign name uh, that is social media. 
And under that campaign, you can have your sources as Facebook or Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, or even YouTube. You see what I'm doing here? I'm taking these platforms and I'm organizing them. These are my social media platforms. Um, and then you can take, for example, email marketing. Maybe you're gonna do an email marketing campaign. So for me, for example, I have some resources that I provide to my email list, like my tracking ROI spreadsheet, my content spreadsheet, and my broadcast. Those fit into the category of email marketing. So I'm gonna have my campaign name as email marketing, and the sources can be tracking ROI content spreadsheet and broadcast. Um, maybe I'm doing some relationship marketing. I'm doing podcast interviews. I'm doing li live shows where I'm basically connecting with other influencers and people that are creating content online. And because of that relationship, that can result in exposure to what I'm doing here, what I'm doing in my business. That can go in the campaign name of relationship marketing. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm basically taking the platforms that I'm using and I'm just organizing them. I'm saying, here are the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense so far? If that makes sense, say yes in the comments and just let me know that we're on the same page, all things are working fine and we are good to go and I can continue on. All right, we're basically just organizing uh, the platforms where I'm gonna be promoting on two different levels. The main category and then the little categories under it, the campaign names and campaign sources. Kimberly, Georges, Ridwan, uh, Cole says yes, Carrie Ann, Farah. Okay, it sounds like we're good to go. I'm glad to hear it. So then, let's continue on, why don't we? All right, so, these are our campaign names and sources. We are done with step number one. We are now moving on to step number two. And Giorgio says, so cool. You are so cool, Giorgio. <laughs> I'm so glad uh, that you guys are finding value in the content today. So set up goals in Google Analytics. I, actually, I should have done this as a poll, but I didn't even think about this. If you have Google Analytics installed on your website, I want you to say Google. Just type in the word Google. That's gonna be our poll. Just type Google just so that I could see if you have it. If you don't have it installed on your website, just say no. That just gives me an idea. All right, so we got Sakina says Google. Uh, Dwayne says Noodle. <laughs> so I'm not sure if he has it or not. Uh, we've got Sophia, Sherry Ann, Ayola, Ayat, Joseph, a lot of you are saying no. All right, for all of you that are saying no, if you have a website and if you are using your website to, 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 to promote your business, one of the first assignments I am gonna be giving you right now is to go and install Google Analytics. Don't do it right now. Don't leave the webinar or anything of that sort. But when this is all said and done, I want you to go to YouTube and search for how to install Google Analytics. All right, that's gonna help you in the process that we are talking about uh, today. So let's look at that process. Um, Ayola said, I had a website with analytics and it was compromised, I cannot access it, so you're starting from fresh. All right, and the beauty is that there are all kinds of tutorials that you can use for free to show you how to set that up, all right? Now, from here on, where, as I'm going now, I'm gonna assume that you do have Google Analytics installed, um, but I'm gonna walk you through the steps, explaining the steps on how to set this all up, all right? I hope that sounds good to you. All right, so a goal, you wanna set up your goals in Google Analytics, and what this basically says is there's a certain activity that I want to track. Because Google Analytics is great in terms of, you know, just tracking your traffic and what people are doing and so on. But in order to get really good data from it, you have to tell Google Analytics what to measure, what to track. So when you have a product that you're selling or a service you're providing, you want to be able to tell Google Analytics 
when this thing happens, this is this means that my goal was accomplished. All right. So it could be anything from a registration to a sign up to a purchase to submitting contact information, any of that stuff. Now we're going to keep it simply today. And we're going to count a goal as reaching a destination. And let me explain what I mean. Here's an example. Let's say you have a website and people are contacting you. You have a contact page where people can fill out a form and send that information to you. They go to that contact page and they submit that information and it takes them to a next page. This page here, this thank you page, that is the destination. So what we can basically say is, once someone reaches that destination, the goal was accomplished. All right, once that destination was reached, they get to that thank you page, we have accomplished our goal. All right, another example, somebody's buying a product on your website. Well, you have a sales page, and when they buy the product, they enter their credit card details, they give you the money, they get to a confirmation page. This says that the product was purchased. The destination was reached, which is the confirmation page. So we can count that as a sale. All right. Now, what we have to look at now is how do you tell Google Analytics to register that destination as a sale? And I'll walk you through that process now. In Google Analytics, if you don't have Google Analytics uh, installed as yet, um, I'm still going gonna, gonna to walk you through these screens and explain to you what I'm doing. So first, I'm going to come here to the admin section of Google Analytics. And when I reach there, there's going to be a section here with goals. I'm going to click on goals. And then I'm going to create a new goal. So I'm going to click on create a new goal. And the kind of goal, if you're, if you're um, uh, thinking to yourself, oh, man, I can't remember all these steps. Don't worry. I'm going to provide a resource for you uh, a little later that will show you all of these things that you need to do. All right? So let's continue. We're going to set a custom goal and click on continue. And once we do that, we're going to give the goal a name. In this case, let's say it's booked an appointment. We're just going to type booked appointment. And then I'm going to select a destination. Because remember, as I said, if they reach that destination, it tells you that they've accomplished the goal. And that's how we're going to set it up today. All right? So destination, then we're going to click on continue. And this is where we're going to give the goal details. So what we're basically saying is if someone reaches that destination slash confirm, and that might be different for your site, whatever that destination URL is, that means they've accomplished that goal. Now, if they're buying something and that goal has a value, I can say that it's a $50 product. And then I can save that goal. Now, once I've saved that goal, you will see it here, booked appointment. Now it's going to start tracking those goals. Now, this is probably the most technical part of what we're going to be doing today. So if that makes sense, you're doing OK. We're doing well. And, and we're going to be able to continue, and we're going to be able to use that now in order to track when these goals were met. All right? So, so far, what we've done, we've broken down our goals. We've set up our goals in Google Analytics. Now it's time for us to move on to step number three. And step number three is we have to create our campaign URLs. So what is a campaign URL? Well, if you think about a URL, a URL is like www.iamlesliesamuel.com, like I have at the bottom of the screen. That's my website. I can just share that URL and say, hey, go to 
I am LeslieSamuel.com. I can put that on social media, but that is not as cool as what I'm going to show you right now. Because what a campaign URL is, it's a tracking link. It's a tracking link. It's also called, in some places you might hear it called a UTM link. But what it does is it's a link that is automatically tracked on Google, in Google Analytics. In other words, if someone clicks on a tracking link as opposed to just a regular link, it's going to give Google Analytics some additional information. For example, that this was posted on social media or that this was that one post that you did about that podcast episode you released. You can add details to these tracking links, also called campaign URLs, also called UTM links. All right? I know we're getting uh, kind of technical and all that good stuff, but this technical stuff is awesome. Because now you're able to see exactly how many people are coming from specific links that you post on social media. We're no longer guessing. We're not saying, oh man, yeah, Facebook is sending me a thousand visits. No, we're saying, man, when I made that post on, Facebook, on my Facebook page about this particular topic, it sent me a hundred people. And of those hundred people, 15 of them bought my $20 product. I made $300 from that specific link. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so let's talk about uh, how to create these campaign URLs. Uh, Google has created a tool called a campaign URL builder. And it gives you the ability to specify certain details. And those details are campaign name, source, medium, term, and content. Now, we're not going to get into all of these. I don't even use all of these. The ones that I use are just these three, the campaign name, the campaign source, and the campaign medium. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now. If you just go to Google and search for Campaign URL Builder, you're going to come to this page here where you can do it. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a quick demo. So let me pull that up here really quick for you. So this is my Campaign URL Builder. Uh, and hopefully you can see. Yep, you should be able to see. Uh, what? You'll be able to see it in a second. And yep, yeah, there we go. I'm in Google, the Google Campaign URL Builder. Now, I'm just going to show you just for the sake of uh, completeness. I'm going to search for uh, Campaign URL Builder. This is literally the way that I get to it every single time. Um, and you can see right here at the top, there's the Campaign URL Builder. And you can click on that, uh, and that will take you to this page. Now. This is the first way that I'm going to show you how to do it. When I'm finished, because this is going to show you how it works. When I'm finished showing you this, I'm going to show you an, what I consider to be an easier way, because I created a spreadsheet to allow you to do this easily and to keep track of all of your, um, all of your campaign URLs. So I'm going to walk you through this so that you can understand the concept. And then I'm going to give you an easier way. So let's go back over to the Campaign URL Builder. OK, so I'm on the Campaign URL Builder. I'm going to zoom in even more and let it take up the entire screen. I don't want you to be worried about all the details and so on. I'm just going to point out a few things. Let's say you have a URL that you're sharing. So in this case, I am going to go with H, uh, I am Leslie Samuel .com, which is my website slash ROI. All right. And this, I'm going to share with you what that URL is in a little while. Now, I want to specify these three things the campaign source, the campaign medium, and the campaign name. Now, I don't like that they put it in this order. I like to start with the campaign name first. That's the more general one. And then go to the source and medium. And the reason I do this is because 
it actually makes more sense when you look in Google Analytics. You can click on the name and then go to the source and medium. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's say I am sharing this link on social media. I'm going to call this campaign my social media campaign. And let's say I'm sharing it on Facebook. And then let's say for the medium, I am going to say something like, um, I want the medium to be, what's today's date? Today is the 24th. So I might say 1124, so November 24. And I will say uh, ROI promotion. So what this is telling me is that I did a, as part of my social media campaign, I promoted this link on Facebook specifically on November 24th, my ROI promotion. Now, that's something that I just made up. So it's not, nothing in particular. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to take this URL and automatically make a longer URL. You see, it's lessysamuel.com. I am lessysamuel.com slash ROI question mark. And then a whole bunch of code added at the end. You don't have to know how it does this. It doesn't matter. All you got to know is that this campaign URL is that magical URL that's going to give Google Analytics all of the information that you need to see that this is from your social media promotion on Facebook on uh, November 24th, your ROI promotion. And you can put in whatever details you want in here, and it will be tracked in Google Analytics. I hope that makes sense. All right, I see uh, uh, he said, that helps, cool, voila, pretty awesome. Man, you guys, are, you guys are feeling this. You guys are enjoying this. You're getting value from this. That's all I want. I want you to get value from it. All right, so whatever that is, if you remember, when we were breaking down our goals, we organized it already. We had our campaign names and our campaign sources. So social media and Facebook. We already planned that out when we broke down our goals. Now we can just add the specific details in here in the campaign medium section. And you don't have to follow the exact you know, way I do it in terms of breaking it down. You just do what makes sense for you. All right. Now, here's the challenge that I find with doing it this way. If every time you uh, go to share a link, you have to come to this page and enter each individual link manually, that can get a bit tedious. Not only that, but if you, for example, you do social media and the S and the M are capitalized, but the next time you come, you don't capitalize the M, that is actually going to show as a completely separate campaign because it is case sensitive. So you want to be accurate in what you're doing, and you want to have a better and easier way to track what you're doing. And I'm going to show you my better and easier way. This is something I had to do for myself because I just got tired of coming back uh, to the Google campaign URL builder. So I created a spreadsheet. And what this spreadsheet will allow you to do is exactly the same thing, but it will allow you to plan it out much better. So for example, in advance, you can say, all right, I have a social media campaign. I have a few um, uh, social media promotions that I'm going to be doing. So it could be Facebook, and then I could be doing Twitter, and I could be doing LinkedIn. I can be doing, well, let me zoom in a little bit too so that you can hopefully see it a little clearer. Um, I can be doing uh, MySpace. Okay, maybe not MySpace. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Um, Pinterest and whatever. And maybe it is my tracking ROI that I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to go with tracking ROI. Uh, tracking ROI. What I'm basically doing here is I am setting these up in advance. So whenever I have a new link that I want to promote, I can just come here, change the destination URL, as you see here. 
I can change that to something else. Maybe I have a new post that I'm promoting or a promotion that I'm doing or a product that I'm selling. I can change that right here and it will automatically update all of the links that I've already pre-populated with the information. And that way, you don't have to every single time say, all right, I want to share this on Facebook. Let me go to the campaign URL builder, create that link. Now I want to share it on um, uh, Twitter. I got to go and change that link. And then I got to do it for each individual one every time. All you got to do is come in here because you've already planned it. You come in here, put the link, and you can copy all of the links that you need. And that just makes it much easier, in my opinion, to th than having to uh, create one every single time. So if you would like to get access to that spreadsheet, uh, you can actually get that by going to IamLeslieSamuel.com slash ROI. If you go to IamLeslieSamuel.com slash ROI, you'll be able to download that by clicking on this Get Course Resources button. Um, th there's a series of videos here that kind of walk you through exactly what we're doing today. Uh, so you're going to already have you know, a lot of that information done. There's no cost here. If you sign up, I'm not selling you anything for this or anything of that sort. It's just to get access to those resources. You'd get access to a handout that I created, that uh, a worksheet that you can go through and break down your goals. And you also get that spreadsheet so that you can uh, easily create your campaign URL. So once again, that is at IamLeslieSamuel.com slash ROI. Can I put the link in the... Um, Thing. Yes, I can. I am lesliesamuel.com slash ROI. And I think there's a way for us to add that as well that makes it uh, pop up or something of that sort. And maybe we can do that as well. Okay, let's continue. Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. Ko is asking, are you tracking this? Unf you know, I should be tracking this, but I'm not. What's wrong with me? How am I going to teach this and not even do it? Uh, and that has to do because I just rushed to put this together for you guys today. But that's all good. Uh, as long, I, I, I want you to just get the resource. All right? That is going to be important. And honestly, I don't need to use a campaign URL. And let me just yeah, this is a good thing to explain. I'm glad you asked that question. I don't need to use a campaign URL when I post it here. Because in Google Analytics, it'll automatically see it's coming from livestorm.co. And once I see that, I know that it's coming from here. If I were doing a bunch of different webinars on this platform, and I want to distinguish between those individual um, resources, I mean, individual uh, webinars that I'm doing, then I would create campaign URLs. I don't have to do that here because once I see Livestorm, I know that it's coming from this webinar because it's the only one that I'm doing on this platform. You guys are special, so we're good to go. And I see the free resource has been add up. There's a pop added. There's a pop up that you can use to click on that and get access to that free resource. All right, let's continue on. So what we've done is we've created these tracking links, these campaign URLs. Next step, step number four, we're coming home. We're coming home. We got two more steps to go. Uh, step number four, share your stuff. Share it on social media. Let the world know about it. You've created this awesome resource. Now put it out there. And with everything that you do, with every promotion that you do, anywhere that you share a link, especially where you're going to be sharing multiple links for multiple reasons, don't just share the regular URL anymore because we've graduated from that. We're on a different level now. We're going to share the campaign URLs because that's going to give us the right information, the information that we are looking for in order to make decisions. All right? So you're sharing on Facebook? Use the campaign URL. Get it from your spreadsheet. You're sharing on Pinterest? Use a campaign, a champagne URL. <laughs> That would be kind of cool if you had a champagne URL, but no, a campaign URL. All right, 
Let's move on to the last, the final step. Analyze your results and refine your plan. Getting this data is great, but it's only great is if, if you actually use that information to improve on your marketing. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you an example. And this, this might be a little small. You may not be able to see it clearly. But this is going back to the example that we did before. We had a number of campaigns that we ran for one client. Uh, well, we actually focused on one campaign, but there were some other campaigns that were run. And if you come over here, you'll see that this one campaign, the first campaign, brought in $4,067.89 in revenue. OK, that is great. Now, some people would look at the others and be like, oh, man, these other campaigns were terrible. Uh, we failed. I don't look at it as we failed because now we have data. And once you have data, you can make decisions. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to go and analyze this one campaign. And, uh, and, oh, and this is looking at it closer. You can see PAX 4, 6 launch. That is the one that brought in all of the revenue during that week or that time period. So I'm going to click on that one. And now what I'm seeing is there are a number of things that we did that worked well. So for example, this first video that we posted on social media brought in $625.95. This one here brought in $360. The email, $369, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're seeing what is working. And then as we continue down the list, we see there are a number of other things that we did that didn't perform very well. So uh, a post that we made on the Facebook page on the last day, zero dollars and a story that we did zero dollars uh and and so on and so forth what is this doing for us this is putting us in a position where we can say all right we did all of these things what worked what didn't work and then based on what did and did not work we can make decisions about how to do it better next time we can focus more of our energy and resources on the things that are actually working, and we can cut off the things that are not working. Or at least we can look at some of those things and say, hey, if I'm going to do, uh, for example, an uh, Instagram story again for the next promotion, I might have to do it a little different. I might have to tweak what I'm doing. I might have to learn how to do a better Instagram story uh, so that it can be more effective the next time. You see what we're doing? We are eliminating the guesswork. We are saying, no, we don't want to just guess what's working and guess that, man, you know, I think Facebook is great. I think Instagram is great. No, we are posting strategically. We are using campaign URLs. And based on the data that we're getting back, we are making decisions on what to do in our business. So those are our five steps. Step number one, identify and break down the goals. Step number two, set up goals in Google Analytics. Step number three, we've created our campaign URLs. Number four, we shared our links on social media. And number five, we have analyzed, we are analyzing our results and refining our plan. And that's pretty much it for uh, the webinar and the training. I hope you got a lot of value from that as a reminder. Uh, well, we're going to take questions right now. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them in. Um, as a reminder, if you want to get access to the resources that I've created for this, you can go to IamLeslieSamuel.com slash ROI, and it'll give you the spreadsheet. It'll give you the worksheet. And it'll give you some instructions. You're going to have some videos there that walk you through the steps, um, some of them in more detail, um, so that you can kind of take that to the next level. And as a reminder, it is 100% free of charge. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and uh, take your questions. OK, so well, that was an amazing, amazing presentation, Leslie.
Awesome. And I hope you guys are enjoying. So before we move forward and take a few questions, I would like to give a quick shout out to Design Hill for organizing this event. And I hope you guys are taking the screenshot and tweeting about this event. And maybe one of you may win $50 gift card. So on that note, let's take a, a quick break and blessing workshop going on. So stay tuned. We'll be back to hear more from me. I've always been creative and always, always been, been an artist as a always young been girl. An artist I used to paint rocks. And young girl, I used to paint rocks and I used to sell them for a quarter. <laughs> and I just fell in love with it. It just grew into a passion of mine. I started looking on the web and I came across Design Hill. And they had a design contest to design a logo and I entered it and, and I won. And I was like, oh, this is really great. I entered it and, and I won. And I was like, oh, this is really great. I can pick and choose what type of logos or design projects I want to work on. And it allows me to be creative, keep my hands you know, with my tools and, and working. So it's kind of nice. It's really easy to use. You can scroll through the projects and there's sections that you could go by. It's really easy. There is a few clients who have come back to use the one-on-one -on -one projects. There's one client in particular, she owns a vintage shop and I designed her logo and she came back. She needed a design for a flyer and she really liked the illustrations that I did for her. So she came back a couple of times with projects. I would recommend it, especially um, if you're a designer that's starting out and you want to learn from other designers, seasoned designers. It's a place to keep in the game and keep using your tools. It makes me feel great and it kind of confirms that I should be doing this. And I love to see logos that I've designed out and proud of that. And I think that the clients are so happy that their logo represents what they do and you know makes them look good. It's a collaboration, it's good for me and it's definitely good for them. So, all right, guys, we are back again, and let's continue without this awesome session with Leslie. And guys, don't forget to ask your questions in the questions tab, and now we'll take up a few questions. So, here's the first question from one of our registrants, and it's, what's the e conversion? Leslie, you are you, you are on mute. Please unmute unmute yourself. All right. Yes, that's a great question. So the easiest, if you're looking for the easiest way to measure uh, social media success, is by just looking on the social media platforms at their analytics. And in their analytics, it'll tell you things like engagement and you know number of clicks and those kinds of things. And by doing that, you at least get somewhat of an idea of how your posts and your content, how it's resonating with people. Uh, and, and, and what you can start to see is, you know what? When I do a certain kind of post, I get more engagement. And from that, you can make some decisions. Now, in terms of ROI, um, for me, the, the best way to measure ROI is by using a process like similar to what I outlined here today. It's by using the campaign URLs and by tracking, um, setting up your goals and then tracking to see what is actually working, what is driving sales. I mean, before we would never be able to say, when I made a specific post, it made me six, $652.38. But if you do a process like what we outlined today, what I outlined today, then you are you you're empowering yourself to make those kinds of decisions. So easiest way, look at the platform's analytics. The best way for tracking conversions is by using a system like what we went through today. You there, Sil?
All right, I'm not sure if we lost her or not, but what I'm gonna do is, because I can see the questions as well, so I'm just gonna go ahead um, uh, and answer the questions as I see them here. So Sophia is asking, can, can Google, oh, yep, she lost internet connection. Uh, can Google Analytics be used only to track social media without the website? Unfortunately not. In order for you to use Google Analytics, uh, you have to have a website because you have to install Google Analytics on your site and you have, you have to have the permission to be able to do that. Google Analytics can only track what it has permission to track. And you, for example, can't say, hey, I need you to track the um, analytics of my Facebook profile or my Facebook page. Only Facebook can do that. But on, like I mentioned a little earlier, on those individual platforms, you have the ability to, um, you, you have the ability to uh, 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 look at their insights and get data that way. So if all, you, if you don't have a website and you're just trying to see, hey, what is working for me on social media, just use the built-in uh, analytics from that social media platform. All right, we're gonna move on. Uh, are you back? Not sure if she's back or anything. Yes, I am. I'm so sorry. Go. My internet is just acting up. No worries. I, I just went ahead and took another question, but we can continue on now. Thank you so much. You are the savior. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's continue. And my next question is, what are some beginning goals I should set up? And what are the best analytics tools? to tally social media impact? And what are some websites I can go on to buy social media ads? OK, so um, wait, th so that was three questions. The first one is, what, what, what? repeat the first one again. Beginning goals. What are the some beginning goals I should beginning set up? Goals. OK, so um, when, when it comes to your social media, some of the beginning goals that people like to set are things like you know, follower growth and likes and those kinds of things. I, I have no issues in, in measuring those things. In fact, when you're just getting started, those are some of the things that you want to look at. You know, am, am I, am, is my social following growing, or is it staying the same? Uh, when I do certain things, do I get more engagement? And based on that, you can determine whether what you're doing is working or not. And then from there, free tools uh, that you can use. As I mentioned before, you can obviously you can use Google Analytics, but all of the different platforms, as long as uh, on certain platforms, you might have to have a business account, um, but you have analytics that you can look at on the individual platforms that tell you whether things are working for you or not. Okay, so moving ahead, my next question continue, in continuation was, uh, um, what are some websites I can I think we're losing you again. Let me just post it in the chat section for you. It will be easier. Okay, no worries. And, um, and what I'll do is, in the meantime, I'll continue on with some of the other questions that people are, are asking as well. Uh, oh, this is a great question that I think a lot of people would have. Uh, are there strategies to increase traffic to your camp uh, campaign, or is it a matter of using methods to evaluate different site content you are using? Yeah, so this is something that is going to depend on the platform that you are using. Uh, I, I always recommend for people to pick a primary social media platform, like the main one that they're going to be focusing on. I am, I'm actually working on an article and a podcast episode about this right now. Um, but But pick your primary platform and maybe a secondary platform. And with your primary platform, what I recommend is following other people in your industry and seeing what they're doing. Um, what, are, what are they doing that, that's getting engagement? Are they posting images? Are they doing video? Are they doing live video? Are they doing, you know, posting questions or polls and so on? And by evaluating what other people are doing, you can get some ideas for what you can do. Uh, another thing that you want to evaluate is some of the things that they're not doing, like what's missing? How can you add something that's just slightly different? 
So I think when it comes to the individual platforms, it's about learning what works best on those platforms and also what works best for your audience and for the kind of content that you can create. And then from there, it's just kind of an ongoing testing and tweaking and so on. I always recommend for people, hey, if let's say you say, I want to go all in on Instagram. Well, then take a course on Instagram marketing because there's so many things that you can do in Instagram marketing to help you to grow your audience. For example, you can start using Reels. Reels is a feature that Instagram just rolled out that's similar to what you can do on TikTok. And because they've just rolled it out, they are really featuring Reels at a much higher level than anything else. So what we're seeing is people that are using Reels are getting 10 times as much exposure because this is new and it's something that Instagram wants to promote. So it's a matter of figuring out what works on the platform of your choice and then going all in, testing and tweaking. All right, let's see. Okay, so my next question is, which sections or metrics are important? Example, revenue. Georgias has asked this question in the chat section. Got it. Yep, that's a great question. Um, so what metrics are important? What metrics are important depends on your business objectives, like what you are trying to accomplish in your um, business. Revenue is always important, absolutely. For me, for the kind of business that I, cre I, I, I run where you know I'm creating content, I'm putting it out there, I care about revenue, I care about email opt-ins, and those are the primary things that I care about. Revenue, of course, because revenue drives my business. Uh, opt-ins, email opt-ins, because um, when people opt in to my email list, uh, I get to serve them, I get to provide them with value, I get to let them know whenever I have new things coming out. I have a new podcast episode, I have a new video, I can interact with these people at a deeper level. Here's the thing. Like visits are great, the number of visitors. And yes, you want to track those kinds of details. But in most cases, a visitor comes to your site and then they leave and you never hear from them again. They never hear from you again. So I always recommend people to have a process for getting people on your email list because then you can continue to communicate with them, provide them with value. That is, that is one of the reasons why you know I, I did this. I did this because... Uh, I want to continue providing you value. And the way that I do that is by getting you on my email list. And then I can keep you up to date. For example, um, Google Analytics. There's a new version of Google Analytics. And some of the things that we went over today, it's changing. So I want to be able to let you know when that happens. So opt-ins to your email list, that is something that I am also very big into tracking. Revenue, opt-ins, visitors. And that's an order of priority. Revenue, because that drives your business. Opt-ins, because ultimately that drives your revenue. And visits, because ultimately that drives your opt-ins, which then drives your revenue. Those are the main things that I would focus on. Great, great. So on that note, let's move ahead to our next question. It's from Anita. Does one need to understand ROI for social media marketing? Why? Do you need to understand ROI for social media marketing? My answer to that question is absolutely. If you are marketing, whether it's on social media or email or podcast interviews or whatever you're doing, here's the thing. We all have a limited amount of time that's available. So you want to be able to know that what you are spending your time on is worth it. So tracking the return on investment, the ROI, that makes it so that you can start to see, okay, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. These four things I did, two of them are giving me a return. The other two are a waste of my time. Now I can stop doing the other two and focus the time that I would have been using to do the other two on doing the things that are actually working. You track ROI because you want to improve. You want to grow. You want to get better. You want to be more efficient. If you don't track ROI, you find yourself where you're just doing a whole bunch of stuff, unclear, unsure about what's actually working, 
And when you come about it from that perspective, you are wasting a lot of time. Okay. So on that note, and before taking our last question, I just want to uh, tell you, Leslie, uh, one of our attendees, Sophia, has written, joined a lot of webinars about ROIs and barely understood them. But this webinar is amazing. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. Awesome. I am so thrilled to hear that. That, that is my goal for, you know, when I do these webinars, to just provide you with value. And if you got that value, I am thrilled. Great. So before we end the session, we can take up the la uh, latest two questions by Tyler. What are some websites where I can buy social media advertising rather than just sharing things by posting on my own social media account? All right. When it comes to social media advertising, I generally recommend Facebook ads and Instagram ads. And the reason for that is that the targeting ability that you have on Facebook and Instagram, it is amazing. You can uh, 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 purchase ads and target your exact, the, the people that you are trying to reach, you can get very specific. You can say, I want to target um, uh, women between the ages of 25 and 34 that are interested in gardening. Just as an example, um, you have a lot of, um, you have the ability to, to, to get very specific to target the exact kind of person that you want to reach. Now, with that being said, a lot of people hear that Facebook ads are great. So they go and they spend money on Facebook ads and they waste a lot of money on Facebook ads. What I tell people is Facebook ads can be great if you know what you're doing. So if you're getting into um, advertising on social media, take a course, get some training, get some professional help because it's an, e I mean, it's an easy way to waste a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. But those are the platforms that I would recommend for uh, social media advertising. Okay, great. So our last question for today's session is, do you have any advice for me as a new content creator in social media such as YouTube, Instagram, and especially by using ROI. Yes, my, my recommendation for you, you said you're a new content creator. Focus on creating good quality content that provides a lot of value. Here's the thing, if you do that, and you do that consistently, people are gonna start stumbling onto your content. And as they stumble onto your content, they're going to find value in it. And then they're going to tell their friends about it. They're going to share it on their social media profiles. A lot of us, what we try to do is, hey, I heard you can make money online, so let me just put a bunch of stuff out there. No, but if you put great content out there, quality content out there, you're going to be much more likely to have the success. And if you do that right, the ROI will follow. When I started my biology blog, I focused on creating the best quality content that I could create. And because of that, it grew to 100,000 and beyond, 134,000 subscribers in a relatively short period of time. It's because I focused on the quality of the content and serving my audience as deeply as possible. It is why when I did planned out this webinar, I focused on putting as much value in it as possible. Because if you get a lot of value from what I'm doing, you're more likely to check out what I'm doing and to go further with me. So if you're just getting started, focus on providing value. Exactly. So on that note, being content is the key and provide value. So this bring us to the end of this wonderful session with Leslie. And this was indeed a value packed session where we touched upon a lot of topics, answered a lot of questions related to learn how to track the ROI of your social media marketing. And although there is a lot, lot more that we could have discussed, but unfortunately we are limited by time here. So I hope you guys love this session cause I personally did. And thank you for coping up with my internet connection and once again, I would like to thank Leslie for taking out the time and being the part of this event. And thank you very much for having me. Great. Thank you so much. So guys, this is not where it ends. We have a lot more events lined up for you all in the coming days. 
and next event is panel discussion on instagram marketing learn how to grow followers and profits on 26th of november if you have not registered yet there is a link in the chat section do check it guys and if you are interested in any of our events being recorded you want to rewatch it then just go on to www.designhill.com/events and you will check out all our events coming up the upcoming events and the older ones too you can follow us and connect us on linkedin you can suggest new speakers or new topics there you can subscribe to our youtube channel and also we have recently launched a diy creative tool called design hill studio so be it a designer or non designer everyone can create beautiful designs such as presentations social media posts banner and etc within a few minutes and all by themselves so on that note i would like to say goodbye to everyone who has joined us here today take care guys and stay safe